guys, this is Steve back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM and this is 27th August 2023 build of the Evolution X ROM. I will list all the important links for this particular ROM if you want to flash it and the flashing guide of course will be present in the description. And the changelog is pretty much huge if you're noticing but I'll show you how exactly it feels like to use this ROM as a real driver. So here in the about section, we have the Evolution X logo up top, the Android version shows as Android 13 and the Evolution X version right now is 7.9.7. .7. The codename is Pinakbait and the device is of course Sweet or the codename is Sweet for the Redmi Note 10 Pro. The security patch is latest of August 5th, 2023 and we have the stock kernel as the 4.14 Perf G kernel and we have the build maintainer as Zaitan. So huge thanks to the developers of this ROM and the build date here is 27th August again and the Islin Street is showing as enforcing here. In the system settings, this is how it looks like. We still get a system updated and you can check for updates from here. And in the gestures, we have the quick tap or the back tap actions and these are the options for that. And it does show this kind of animation over here. And we have the quickly open camera and stuff. Those should be working fine. Then we have the system navigation gestures. In the settings of the gesture navigation, we have the advanced gestures and you can customize it between these many options. We have the pill length and the radius customization. And this is how it looks like with the fullest pill length and radius. And we have the IME button space. You can choose it to default, narrow or hidden. Then we have the swipe to invoke assistant. That also works perfectly fine. Left JIT customization is also there then we have the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture then we have the two button and three button navigations as well we have the one handed mode that should be working fine press and hold power button action you can change it to power menu or assistant and we have the double tap and you can turn it on if you want to have the double tap ambient display the swipe click screenshot is also working perfectly fine there is a share edit delete and the google lens feature capture mode will also appear whenever it's needed then we have the playback control and the prevent ringing let me go back and if you scroll down more, we have the thermal profiles and you can set per app thermal profile to the benchmark browser camera, dialer gaming, streaming, etc. options. And for the Android benchmark apps, I have already changed that to benchmark. Now, let me show you the home screen. This is how the home screen actually looks like. Yes, talking about the widgets, the subscriber account widget that I have added is working fine. Then we have the battery widget as well. That should be working fine but for some reason right now the bluetooth widget is not showing up like the bluetooth battery but yeah normal like battery and stuff it's working fine and the clock widget as well is working fine and the animations with it is working perfectly fine and 120 hertz let me tell you here is actually working perfectly no problems that you will face with 120 hertz on this rom to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page and it is very smooth experience no issues and here swiping up will get you to the app drawer and it is a very smooth experience and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel. And these are the stock apps of this ROM but let me tell you the fresh walls, Pixar, etc. These kind of apps are there because I was restoring my Google app data backup but we still get the recorder and the papers app by default here no problems with those. And talking about the quick setting panel this is how it looks like well even when I'm in the light theme the quick setting panel stays dark like this but otherwise let me show you the toggles that I have added I have the Wi-Fi the mobile data the Bluetooth toggle flashlight and stuff everything is working fine the auto rotate night light hotspot Google home controls battery saver and the screen recording is also there there is the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time and the enable HEVC option is there we have the data saver dark theme extra dim always on display toggling option you can toggle it also for charge if you want ambient display heads up and the refresh it you can put it to auto or you can just switch straight up to 120 hertz no issues that should be working we have the reboot toggle as well and we have the do not disturb nearby share airplane mode screencast and the one-handed mode as well and again the experience with the quick setting panel is really smooth no problems and here we have the brightness slider on the bottom you have the auto brightness icon right there and if you go into the power menu you do have the advanced reboot if you enable it from the settings you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here let's talk about the stock camera well you are getting the leica camera right out of the box here even though this is not the latest version 5 leica camera but yes it is very optimized leica camera this is how the settings of it looks like it has huge amount of customization that you can choose from and if you swipe up you will get the vlog vlog pro slow motion and the movie effects, sticker avatar, super moon, dual video, all these kind of options. And the portrait mode also should be working fine. The night mode, 61 pixel mode, everything is here. Even with the portrait mode, the front camera, as you can see, it's working perfectly fine. No problems with the front camera or something like that, even with portrait mode. And in the normal photo mode, let me switch to the other lenses, the 0.66x and the 1x, the 2x, all the options are working perfectly. And the video settings, it will show that with the rear camera, it can shoot 4K 60 FPS, but it won't be able to you will only get up to 4k 30 fps working over here so do not select the 4k 60 fps option if you're shooting rear camera videos 
we have the documents mode you can choose this enhanced option that should work and even you can shoot pro mode videos if you want again up to 4k 30 fps with the rear camera and if you want front camera videos let me show you you have up to 10 rupees 60 fps option and that should work as you can see it's working perfectly fine no issues with that i'll give you some of the samples that i have taken with this particular camera so like a camera present right out of the box works really good and it is really great that we have this like a camera right out of the box on the storm talking about the basic things yes the dear info and stuff shows as l1 here so you do not need to worry about that and 4g volte calling and everything will be working fine it has google dialer so call recording also will work but it may announce it the safety net passes right out of the box over here so banking apps will not be a problem here the ir blaster actually is working perfectly fine no issues and it still offers the Google Photos and Videos unlimited backup. So that's really good feature. Now let me show you the settings panel. And in here, first of all, we will get the customization inside the Evolver settings. But I am not going to be showing you all the customization because it's just too much. I have shown you this customization panel multiple times. But let me show you the lock screen clock fonts. As you can see, there are plethora of fonts that you can choose from. Amazing amount of options you will get over here. No problems whatsoever with these clock styles. I have been using it with this cafe 24 but you can use whatever you want so pretty much huge huge amount of options are there so you can choose between these kind of locks in clock style and even for the quick setting panel we have this combined kind of quick setting styles and stuff and we have the battery icons and stuff for the status bar let me show you these are the options for the like battery icons and we have plethora of options for the battery icon i have been using it with the ios 16 style and it looks super cool but you can actually customize between amazing amount of options in the gestures as well we have the brightness control so we can still slide a finger on the status bar to actually adjust the brightness the long press bar button toggle torches there then we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar both so all these customizations are still here you do not need to worry about that in the miscellaneous settings we still have the unlimited google photo storage unlock higher fps in games netflix poof etc options and we have the ignore windows secure flags if you need that and there is the usb configuration for convenience you have the parallel space as well so you can use two separate accounts for whatsapp and we have the game space as well you can add it for any game it's for the overlay and we have the smart pixels as well all these customizations you can do in this evolver settings in the battery settings this is how it looks like we have the battery usage pixel battery usage chart and if you scroll down more we can see the battery charging warning and we have the battery optimization per app you can do that's a really good thing you do not get to see the charging cycles the current battery capacity design battery capacity all those things again are simply missing over here which you do get in the like k20 pros evolution x or even the poco a5's evolution x and stuff so yeah that's how it is in the sleep mode you can like toggle these if you want and the battery temperature actually shows up that's a really good thing with the aku battery app let me show you the battery life that i have got well this is all estimated numbers guys but here it shows six hours of screen on time but i would say it's not like properly showing i would say you can get definitely seven plus hours of screen on time if you use it normally and with the screen off i have about 20 days that's even like that's again too much of standby time so yeah that's how it is but screen on time should be better than this but the screen off or the standby time should be worse than this and the combine use it shows about like six days it depends how you are using the device so yeah in the health section my battery health shows as 83 percent so depending on your battery health it will give you about seven plus hours of screen on time even if you have about 80 percent battery health left and the fast charging here is also working perfectly fine you do not need to worry about that in the sound and vibration settings we have the media call ring etc volume controls and this is how the volume panel looks so you can actually expand it just like this you can change the output device from right here if you want and we have the vibration general kind of profiles right here and you can increase or decrease the volume from right here of course let me scroll down more we have the live caption media and the vibration and haptics you can actually customize that if you want let me go back we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option when we scroll down more we have the per amp volume control dial pad tones in call notification sound screen locking sound charging sound and vibration etc silent and medium mute option is there and we have the me sound enhancer and you can enable that and from here you can choose it to youth edition or even other headphone presets are also there the sound quality via the headphone jack bluetooth and even the speakers and stuff everything is working perfectly fine even you have more presets if you want and we have the choose scene option you can go with smart music video or voice let me go back we have the clear speaker option as well you can toggle it on if you want and we have the haptic feedback or the poly y vibration intensity you can customize with this in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive or auto brightness the extra dim and we have the lock screen settings right here we have the privacy controls and we have the control from lock device 
we have the shortcuts you can change it for the lock screen we have the double line clock always show time and info ambient display and the wake screen for notifications are also there here we have the screen timeout and you can set it up to 30 minutes then we have the dark theme you can schedule it and turn on pitch black mode and stuff if you want then we have the display size and text you can customize that if you want let me go back we have the dpi customization then night light you can also change the intensity from here the live display option is there we have the reading mode as well it will turn the display in like grayscale and we have the color calibration the rgb control let me go back we have the normal color settings in here you can change it to natural boosted saturated and adaptive i have been using it with the boosted one we have the auto red screen then the smooth display and we have the double tapped wake prevent accelerator wake up is the pocket detection i guess and we have the wake up on plug then the normal ambient display customization is there and in here we have the pickup option i'll show you this later on and we have the custom display settings so you can enable anti flicker or the de-streaming mode if you want but i would say just do not turn it on because sometimes i have seen some fingerprint scanner issues if you turn this feature on and there is also the high brightness or daytime brightness mode in the wallpapers and styles we have the change wallpapers and in here we have the feathers and we have the on device wallpaper that's the evolution access wallpaper and we have the live wallpapers as well you also have the papers app for the evolution access wallpapers but i have been using the fresh walls app for the wallpapers guys and we have the 16 colors for the basic and wallpaper colors we got the dark theme the themed icons app grid is there and you can set it up to 6 by 10 then we have the shortcuts you can change it to google home or something like other shortcuts are also there and we have the flashlight and stuff right here let me go back we have the system icon packs and you can change it from right here then we have the system fonts as well and again plethora of fonts are here you can see it also in the customization or the evolver settings in the security settings we do get the enhanced pin privacy then the power button instantly locks and the scramble pin layout also we do have the quick unlock option in the more settings we do have app lock and i have already set up app lock i'll show you that i have already completed the face unlock setup right now and we have selected this when swiping up on lock screen and in the fingerprint settings you do get this touch to unlock anytime so if you want to it will unlock whenever you press the fingerprint scanner button so you can turn it off if you want that feature and here let me show you if i just double tap in the home screen anywhere and it just goes to sleep and if i just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks right now perfectly smoothly and let me try one more finger and yeah that too is working fine so fingerprint scanner as you can see right now it's working perfectly fine no problems whatsoever double tap to wake yes also works fine this is how the lock screen actually looks like and it shows the time like this the shortcuts are actually working perfectly fine no problems let me go back and again the fingerprint scanner is working perfectly right now let's test the pickup gesture and i just kept the device on the desk and let's just pick it up on my hand and here as you can see you are noticing the ambient display and here if i can also double tap to actually go into the lock screen or i can tap the fingerprint scanner to actually unlock it let me enable the always on display so yeah always on display is also working fine cool i would say and here if i just swipe up the face unlock it's showing recognizing face and it unlocks let me try one more time with the face unlock it has this black border on the front camera if you're noticing that whenever i swipe there is the black border so it won't give you a halo effect once you are in a video call or something like that let me try one more time with the face unlock and yeah it unlocks no issues and here let me show you the app lock and this is how it looks like and right now if i just tap the fingerprint scanner the app particularly will unlock so yeah app lock face unlock and the fingerprint everything is working fine but make sure you have that anti flicker mode disabled otherwise you will face the wake up issue now let's talk about the overall performance well with the test to website with chrome actually it is showing about 84 plus fps but yeah i think it's trying to reach 120 hertz but it's not able to as you can see right now i zoomed in it is going about 100 fps but yeah that's how it is right now i have the fps set it to auto but if i just switch to 120 hertz and just re fresh this particular test to website it's showing 94 95 kind of fps so yeah it's trying to reach but yeah it's not reaching full 120 fps but that's fine redmi note 10 pro does not have a super powerful cpu guys so that could be the reason but otherwise 120 hertz and stuff everything is working fine and right now as you can see the bluetooth battery actually is working fine so that's cool and if you want to see the scrolling performance over here let me just log into x and right now if i just scroll just notice how smoothly it scrolls no problems whatsoever and i'm pretty sure it's scrolling at 120 hertz so it's very smooth experience overall no problems that you will face while scrolling on twitter or stuff like that so the performance overall for daily driving it's really good even switching between apps it's not a problem at all there won't be any issue but yeah there will be certain minor frame drops here and there if you're switching too fast to different apps 
But yeah, otherwise, I would say it's a very good experience with overall performance of the UI. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular Evolution X build, the version 797 on the Redmi Note 10 Pro right now. It's a very stable experience overall, but you need to remember some of the things that do not enable the anti-flicker mode, otherwise you will get the wake up issue. But other than that, I did not find any bugs. It should be fine as a daily driver and it will give you amazing amount of customization, amazing daily driving experience overall, has a Leica camera by default. So great photo quality or video quality or even selfie quality with this. So I can definitely recommend you guys to actually flash the latest Evolution X ROM for your Redmi Note 10 Pro. It has good battery life, fast charging also works perfectly fine. Evolution X right now really gets a thumbs up from me. Earlier, I would say there was some kind of RAM management issues. So those issues has been completely fixed in my opinion at least. Let me know down there in the comments what do you guys think. Share this video out with your friends if you feel like. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.